Hello, um, this is Annalee Martin. Um, I did want to go over checking placement of gastric tubes and enteral feeding with, with um, gravity and pump. Um, so in the last video, um, the, I, I kind of got cut off, um, but I wanted to include that you need to check the nutrition label for the caloric intake on whatever you're feeding them. Um, and with, um, with TPN, you need to, you also will have to like set up the rate on the pump, um, so that it feeds at whatever, um, like rate is, um, prescribed to them and according to hospital policy. Um, now when it comes to, um, like enteral feeding, um, administering a tube feeding, um, you may want to use thorough water if they're immunocompromised or if they're critically ill. And you also are going to want to check the um, bowel sounds at least once per um, shift. Um, you are going to want to check the chart to make sure like whatever type of feed they're ordered. Um, they're, you're going to want to check the volume and frequency, gather the supplies, and check your expiration date. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you do put a pad over the patient from their neck and below. And then you will remove um the tubing to me this kind of reminds me of like when you're um like it just kind of reminds me a little bit of the of the directions when you're giving like an IV because just remember it, I was reading a, a story about one of the about a nurse who forgot to um close up the clamp uh, the roller clamp um so that's just um it kind of reminds me of that a bit um so you always want to close the roller clamp um and, sl and slide the clamp on the tubing and then um hang the empty water bag and uh, remove the tabs um you're going to want to remove that seal on the formula and um also remove the cap on the spike on the administration set and twist the spike into the feeding bottle kind of like how we learned with the with the iv hang the bottle upside down on the iv pole um, and then you're going to fill the chamber, um, about one third to a half full, fill the water bag up to 750 mLs and then close the top to rehang it. Um, and you, um, also are going to want to insert that cassette into the pump and close the lever on the machine. Um, the machine sometimes, um, I was reading, sometimes it will prime the tubing for you. Um, and... Um, I guess like a lot of the newer um, machines now will, will do the priming for you, but regardless, um, you'll have to, you're, then you're going to have to set the rate, um, and then I was, and then you do have to always, um, whenever you're doing this, you have to aspirate the gastric contents, um, and with the syringe and you want to check for, um, so you can check for the proper placement of the, of the tube, um. And then you're going to put the, put the water into the container and um, you're going to want to unclamp the tube and stick the syringe in and pull back um, and, and see whatever return content you have. Um, and then you are going to, you're going to test those contents. I did read that the best way is going to be an x-ray, but that's not always, um, that may not always be appropriate or ordered, but you should always order an x-ray to make sure that, um, that any type of um, tube, any type of um, like feeding tube is in appropriately. Um, so you're gonna flush the tube with um, 30 ml of sterile water and then um, clamp the tube and discontinue the syringe and then you will attach your feeding setup and you will run the machine, um, document the amount, the type of feeding and the patient response. Um, with a continuous feeding, you are always gonna wanna check for any like amount that's left in the stomach and you are going to want to confirm the placement every four to six hours. Um, sometimes you may need to document like the I and O. And another very important thing is um, to um, make sure that the head of the bed is elevated at least 30 degrees. Um, now, when you're administering an intermittent tube feeding, um, using a gravity setup and like an open feeding bag system, um, you are, of course are going to want to check the order. Same as the other, the bed's going to be 30 degrees. Um, you're going to want to hang up the bag about 12 inches above the patient's stomach. Um, of course, clamp the tubing. Um, you're going to want to clean the top of the can with the alcohol wipe, um, and then you're going to pour the formula into the feeding bag. Um, then you will like open the clamp just like before and um, rid any air and you will close the clamp. Um, make sure that you have a, a waterproof pad. 
um, and then you will aspirate the contents um, and do and flush with the 30 ml of water um, and then you'll clamp the tube and attach the set. Um, now you will allow it to infuse for at least 30 minutes and then you will flush the feeding bag and the peg tube with the 30 mls and um, when, you will, when you're done you will um, apply your cap and um, even afterwards you're going to want to have your patient set up for like th at least 30 to 60 minutes. Thank you.